Welcome to the NTN Nightly, I'm Nisha Charles. This edition's top stories. St. Lucia is making an important step towards achieving energy independence. The National Special Olympics team comes in for high commendation from Prime Minister Honorable Alan Shatney. The Cultural Development Foundation moves to preserve the island's intangible heritage. All that plus the latest in youth development, sports and the NTN Nouvelle Arqueo. Sanusha is making an important step towards achieving energy independence, greater energy supply reliability and sustainability with construction of a 54 kilowatt solar photovoltaic carport system with electric vehicle charging stations. This 54 kilowatt solar carport facility with electric vehicle charging stations is being built at the Department of Infrastructure Ports and Energy parking lot in Union Castries. Not only will the completed facility accommodate charging of electric vehicles, but it will also importantly offset energy consumption of the ministry's headquarters, significantly reducing the amount of money expended by the state in electricity costs. Public Utility Officer Mr. Kurt Ingles says this project provides tangible evidence of the benefits of renewable energy. This solar carport really demonstrates the what is possible with solar energy. So instead of using scarce lands and taking up all that space for the solar energy. What we're doing is we're integrating the car port or the parking lots into the whole um, solar system. So when we're done, we're going to have 24 covered parking bays and the covering for those parking bays will be solar panels. So vehicles will be able to park underneath, they will be shaded and the solar radiation that would normally just be falling onto the vehicles will be producing electricity to offset electricity to the building and also to provide charging for electric vehicles. The project is being financed by the Italian government through a Memorandum of Understanding on Cooperation on Climate Change Vulnerability, Adaptation and Mitigation in CARICOM Member States. Head of the Renewable Energy Division, Mr. Terence Gillard, says the initiative is an important investment towards achieving St. Lucia's nationally determined contribution targets of 35% renewable energy penetration within the national energy mix by 2025. The government in 2018 endorsed the National Energy Transition Strategy and essentially this is a roadmap for um, transitioning our energy sector to a more sustainable path, a path with um, greater renewable energy integration and one that also speaks to um, um, energy efficiency adhering to three very important principles. So this is really contributing to, to that, to meeting our NDC targets. You know, we generate our energy, more energy from renewable sources, less carbon dioxide emissions into the environment, and therefore it, it, con it contributes to meeting our um, NDC targets. And of course, greater renewable energy penetration within our national energy mix. The facility is being constructed by local experts, Gearing Up Limited, contracted through the National Competitive Bidding Procedures. The Public Utilities Officer says the project is important in helping to secure a sustainable energy future for all. It is very important that we move beyond the speaking of the possibilities of solar energy and into the actual implementation and use in the broader context. So we're hoping that this will be the first of other solar carports to be installed in St. Lucia. The Ministry of Infrastructure, Ports, Energy and Labour apologizes to members of the public visiting its union headquarters and the Transport Department for inconveniences which may be encountered during the construction phase. This project is expected to be completed and commissioned by July 2019. From the Communications Unit, this is Shannon Nabon. The benefits and hurdles of the Economic Partnership Agreement, the EPA, between Europe and the Caribbean, African, Pacific States, CARIFORUM, were thrashed out here as representatives met for the 25th meeting of the Council of Ministers. More from Anisia Antoine. The Council of Ministers of CARIFORUM's 25th meeting's agenda included the signing of an Economic Partnership Agreement with the United Kingdom and an update on the status of the Economic Partnership Agreement with the European Union. The economic partnership agreements between the EU and the African, Caribbean and Pacific countries is aimed at promoting trade within the ACP and EU. 
The current African-Caribbean-Pacific-EU Partnership Agreement, CPA, was signed in Cotonou in June 2000 and will culminate in 2020. Percival Marie is the Director General of CARIFORUM. In our deliberations, we brought ministers were brought up to date with the current status of part of the negotiation, which is the foundation part of the negotiations. Um, they identified matters of continuing concern to them. We began to look at the original component of the ACP EU post Cotonou matters, and ministers advised on some strat strategies and priorities for Caribbean involvement in the negotiation. The Economic Partnership Agreement extends beyond previous trade arrangements between the Caribbean and the EU to include areas such as services, investment, e-commerce, government procurement and intellectual property. The EU is probably the largest single donor of grant financing to the region. Uh, under the 10th European Development Fund, we have a program of 324 million euros. And ministers were brought up to date on how these monies were being programmed, what successes and failures we had, what challenges were being experienced, what projects had already been approved, um, and what arrangements were being made for the implementation of these projects. Ministers considered that and gave strategic guidance to the work that has to continue. The CARI Forum Council of Ministers is scheduled to meet with the European Commissioner for Development in Jamaica on April 15, 2019, to negotiate the terms of the post Cotonou Agreement. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. The United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, UNESCO, is assisting St. Lucia's Cultural Development Foundation, the CDF, in identifying and preserving the island's intangible heritage. Janelle Norville explains. The five-day capacity development workshop will focus on the implementation of the UNESCO Convention for the Safeguarding of the Intangible Cultural Heritage at the national level. Intangible cultural heritage encompasses the practices, representations, expressions, knowledge, skills, as well as the instruments, objects, artifacts, and cultural spaces associated therewith that communities, groups, and in some cases individuals recognize as part of their cultural heritage. Deputy Executive Director of the Cultural Development Foundation, Celeste Burton, highlighted the importance of safeguarding the intangible cultural heritage. St. Lucia's National Commission for UNESCO Secretary General Marcia Symphorian said that this has been one of the most rapidly ratified conventions, however it is not without its challenges. The organization recognizes that there remains tremendous challenges for many member states who are party to the convention to fully understand the convention and the various mechanisms that have been established within its framework. The organization recognizes also that in many instances, the member states simply do not have the human resources or the technical expertise necessary for the effective implementation of the convention. It is for this reason that UNESCO's focus has been and continues to be on encouraging the ratification, which St. Lucia has done, but as well to assist member states with meeting the obligations under the convention, such as the reporting requirements, for example, and as well, benefiting from the support provided by the various mechanisms for cooperation under the convention, such as the ICH Fund. This intangible cultural heritage transmitted from generation to generation is constantly recreated by communities and groups in response to their environment, their interaction with nature, and their history, and provides them with a sense of identity and continuity, thus promoting respect for cultural diversity and human creativity. Facilitator of the 2003 Convention for the Safeguarding of the Intangible Cultural Heritage, David Brown, explained the importance of safeguarding. The cultural forms that we don't practice from generation to generation gets lost. And what UNESCO seeks to do is to ensure that as much as possible as we can, we use the term safeguard, which is to identify those practices, um, create a listing of them, or, and create an inventorying of them. The workshop is being conducted in collaboration with a number of stakeholder agencies and will be held from the 25th to the 29th of March 2019. For the Government Information Service, I am Janelle Norville. 
The month of March has been dubbed Women's History Month in celebration of the contribution of women to events in history and contemporary society in the United States. Across the globe, the movement for gender equality and women's empowerment has been growing and has stirred discussions surrounding how women are defined and bringing balance to society. In St. Lucia, the organization She.LC, along with the Mexican Embassy and the Alias Frances, brought women from all facets of society to discuss the role of women, their experiences, and how they can work towards a more inclusive society in St. Lucia. Kentilia Louis is the artistic director of She.LC. We find we tend to like to have, you know, activities just to, you know, um, commemorate or just to say we were doing something. Um, what we try to encourage is uh, let us move to the next level and to make sure you have a move to the next level you must be able to have the in-depth discussions with persons who can make a difference and um, bring awareness and so that's what we are trying to do here um, and i'm very happy that again as usual we are partnering with alias forces and with the mexican embassy um, to make this um this happen because they too in terms of their point of view they believe that um gender relations, gender parity, and women empowerment is something that we need. A professor at the National Autonomous University of Mexico says the event was an opportunity to explore what is in the minds of St. Lucian women and how they can play a greater role in society. Because we know that a country that has uh, women that are, are not autonomous and that are suffering under domestic violence and under harassment in jobs and on the, is, is not a country that is progressing, right? We know the attachment in between joyful women, autonomous women, equity and development. So we want to address that precise link. The status of women, their energy, their minds, their bodies, what they live, what they want, what are they suffering um, uh, upon, and what are their wishes, wonders, and, uh, and longings. International Women's Day was held on March 8, 2019, under the theme, Balance for Better. And this is the NTN Nightly. Coming up, the latest happenings in youth and sports with Ryan O'Brien. What's in the food you're eating? Do you really even know? All the chemicals and hormones used to accelerate their growth. All the artificial flavoring, sweeteners and colors too. We consume and we don't spare a thought for the damage that they'll do. The that no, they do. think about the children. Think about the children. How will we say that? Chemicals and GMOs are not the solution. Use organic and Excessive agrochemical use, additives, and genetically modified foods are harmful to health and the environment. Join the good food revolution. Grow, buy, and consume organic. A message from Rye St. Lucia and the Ministry of Sustainable Development with funding from the GEF Small Grants Program, UNDP. The Good Food Revolution. Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sports. Welcome to your update from the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports on the NTN Nightly News. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Members of St. Lucia's Special Olympic team return home Saturday following participation in World Special Olympics in Dubai and Abu Dhabi. The team won gold in football, beating Poland 4-1 in the final, a silver medal in the 100 meters, and one gold and three bronze medals in bocce. The contingent was met on arrival by officials from the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports and Prime Minister the Honourable Alan Chastney, who arrived on a flight shortly afterwards. He also visited the VIP lounge and addressed the Special Olympians. It's the week of inter-secondary schools track and field competition, scheduled for Wednesday and Friday this week starting at 10 in the morning at the Darren Sami Cricket Ground. Qualifiers for the Southern and Northern Zones were held last week. The Ministry is also making preparations for the Inter-District Primary Schools competition scheduled for April 3rd. A technical meeting has been planned for April 1st, 2019 at the Ministry's conference room. Registration deadline is Wednesday, March 27th, 2019. 
It's just a matter of days before the start of Youth Month, and the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports held a briefing on Monday to ensure relevant stakeholders were fully updated on all the activities formally planned for the observance. Youth Expose on April 5th, down to be held at the Constitution Park, will also mark the formal opening of Youth Month. Other events marking the month include the TAII Speech Festival, April 1st to the 4th, at the Financial Center, Youth Parliament, Win We Memorial Lecture, April 13th, to be presented by Dr. Winston Fulgens, Camp Kalingo, April 19th to the 21st, Youth Service Week, April 15th to the 20th, and Youth Awards, April 27th. And that's your update for today. From the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports, I'm Ryan O'Brien. Thanks, Ryan. In keeping with changes in international oil prices and government's application of the modified market pass-through petroleum pricing mechanism, the retail price of gasoline, diesel, and the LPG's 20, 22, and 100-pound cylinders has changed. The price of kerosene remains unchanged. The price changes take effect from Monday, March 25, 2019. Gasoline decreased from $13.95 to $13.35 per gallon. Diesel also decreased from $13.95 to $13.84 per gallon. Kerosene remains unchanged at $8.21 per gallon. The 20-pound LPG cylinder increased slightly from $32.06 to $32.30. The 22-pound cylinder increased by $0.28 cents to $35.82. The 100-pound cylinder increased from $202.83 to $205.39. The next adjustment for the retail prices of fuel products will be on Monday, April 15, 2019. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle Arqueol. When the authority of the heads of government of the OECS and its other ministerial councils meet and adopt policies for the organization, they rely on the OECS Commission to transform these into action. The OECS Commission is the Secretariat of the organization, a grouping of officials headed by a Director General, mandated to implement the decisions of the governments but also empowered to make recommendations on the strategic directions of the organization. The OECS Commission organizes meetings, prepares budgets, conducts research, undertakes projects, negotiates for and represents the OECS member states. It is organized along several components. There are the commissioners from each member state who, along with the Director General, form the commission that oversees the work programs. There are also technical divisions with specialized units between them, as well as diplomatic missions in Brussels and Geneva. All these complement each other to make the OECS Commission the engine of regional integration in the Eastern Caribbean. The OECS has a proud past, and together we are working towards a brighter future for all our citizens. For more information, visit www.oecs.org. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Arqueo. Monsieur Tanisha, Monsieur Madame, Department de Responsabilité pour Information and Gouvernement de l'Assise, c'est GIS, à ce repli télévision national pour la NTN, Capositeau Nouvelle Arqueo, Capositeau Primus Hutchinson. C'est l'ici, tu es plein. Et puis, assistance de l'anglité, de l'argument de l'économique pour ces pays qui réforment. C'est le ministre qui est responsable pour l'industrie, le commerce, le développement des affaires, l'investissement. On va Bradley Felix, il a félicité de façon que l'anglité a adressé l'argument. On va Felix dit que ça a porté bonne force pour continuer la chaîne de produits qui sont sur la place du pays européen avec l'anglité, après l'anglité sorti à Bali Lyon. Et vous êtes en train de bien content de la manière dont nous avons fait des affaires. Et quand il dit que bah, ça, c'est pas juste dit nous avons parlé avant de Aujourd'hui, c'est bien important et historique. Ça nous fait avec Saint-Lucie, avec Caribe, uh, ces gens-là qui étaient. Et ça nous fait là, et quand il fait assez, nous avons continué continuer à cultiver les relations. Plusieurs pays à Caribe là, ont essayé un argument des économiques et puis l'anglité pour continuer pour tuer le traitement des performances pour produire hot ce pays là en Europe et puis l'Angleterre. 
avec des jours activités ça là t'es commencé jeudi passé et vendredi semaine passée plusieurs institutions groupe agences et l'autre qui est l'Angleterre qui est l'Angleterre en business produit hot marijuana t'es assemblé un bureau bureau of standards vendredi semaine passée pour te former le comité qui est responsable pour procurer Jid en meilleure façon pour ménager le business de ces produits là et que la loi PIA, ça c'est la loi PIA accepté pour sa fête. Bureau of Standards, c'est l'institution qui est établie pour faire assurer que tout business et produit a des rendez-vous qui sont acceptables avant de trouver à sur la place PIA. En parlant de ça, il y a un membre de l'organisation Cannabis Society, ici, Dr. Gilberto Centros, déclaré que l'organisation a félicité Bureau of Standards pour pouvoir initiative ça là parce qu'il n'y a plus le temps l'organisation a gommé pour faire ça en réalité. Selon le Dr. saint le cannabis ni en bas de valet à diverses façons et comme des marches jacques fait pour tirer à bas loi crime et qu'il ça travaille en faveur l'organisation bien tout bonnement. Puis um, nous connaissons le cannabis, le ganja, le marijuana, c'est un bagage bien important pour nous, puis pas juste pour l'argent, mais pour la santé. Et puis, pour manger aussi, pour manger, pour um, faire caille, pour faire crème, pour faire shampoo. Puis, là, il y a des choses qui sont Et puis, le um, cannabis, le chaibou, ne pas connaître. Hein? Puis, on peut faire lait, et puis, c'est gwen là. On peut faire crème pour um, la peau, on peut faire shampoo. Et on peut faire caille, et puis, um, chaise, et puis, table. Et puis, l'année, il a fait, qui s'est dit, Europe, code, ou peut faire code. Et il y a des choses et pour santé, il y a des choses qui connaissent comment il y a le Japon, le cannabis, le ganja, pour asthme, pour cancer, pour épilepsie, pour des choses comme multiple sclerosis, et pour mal, l'année, il y a des mal, et puis, il n'y a pas attrapé un rien. Si tu as aidé, mal la co ganja, cannabis la. Le gouvernement a annoncé changement en prix pétrole pour gasoline, diesel et sa pochette manger. Un cylindre 20, 22 et 100 livres. J'ai changé. Et puis, prix gasoline, c'est même qu'on avant. Et ce changement, ça a entré en opération depuis lundi, le 25 mars. Gasoline réduit par 13,95 dollars sous. Pour 13 dollars et 36 sous. Diesel descend sorti 13 et 86 sous ou 13 dollars et 84 sous. Puis, Kaozin resté à même prix, ça c'est 8 dollars et 21 sous. Cylinder 20 livres augmenté sorti 32 dollars et 6 sous pour 32 dollars et 3 sous. 22 cylinders haussés par 28 sous pour. 35 dollars et 82 sous. Yon sa cylinder rose sorti 2 dollars et 83 sous pour 205 dollars et 39 sous. L'autre mangement a sous prix des produits pétrole qui a fait lundi le 15 avril. Et c'est comme ça nous arrivons à un bout de nouvelle là. Je vous dis à M. Pedam, je vous remercie pour vous regarder et je vous remercie pour l'invitation. Je vous remercie encore si vous consommez la vie. Les gens qui présentent leur lot, nous faisons la coyole. Après ça, nous avons vu pour nous. Merci en pile, Primus. Et here's a look at what's happening to us weather-wise. The Atlantic High Pressure System will maintain a moderate to brisk easterly wind flow across St. Lucia and the rest of the Eastern Caribbean region over the next few days. Low level clouds drifting with this flow will bring scattered showers over the islands during the next 24 hours. The tide for Castries Harbour was low at 1.19 p.m. and will be high again at 7.49 p.m. Tide for VA4 Bay was low at 2.46 p.m. and will be high again at 8.56 p.m. The sea is moderate to locally rough with waves 5 to 7 feet or 1.5 to 2.1 meters. Small craft operators and sea bathers are advised to exercise caution due to above normal seas. The sun will rise Tuesday at 6.04 a.m. 
And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Charles.